hurry, hurry. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Same old story. Late again. Too bad, Henry. Mr. Allen waited for you, but he had a meeting to attend at two, and, well, he just couldn't put it off. Why don't you try tomorrow? Ha, huh. tomorrow. Oh, hang it all, where does the time go? Eh, hey, Henry? Sure, we know you had this luncheon date, and then after that you... Well, never mind. You can drop by tomorrow. See him tomorrow, eh? Can't, Henry. What about Bledsoe? Well, that was postponed, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. Bledsoe at 9 and and Higgins at 11. Now, that ought to work. But how will you fit in McNamara? Ye gods, where will you find the time? Time. haircut, Henry. So what's 15 minutes, half an hour? You need a haircut, all right. Maybe you ought to go in and sort of get yourself organized. Good for you, Henry. <sighs> That's better. How about a massage, Henry? Oh, come on, Henry. Do you good. You'll feel like a million. What's the matter, Henry? Oh. Another clock, eh, Henry? Don't let it bother you. This place is full of clocks. The barber's grandmother gave him that one. That one over there is for the kids. And that one in the window came with the place. Oh, this boy is all set. But don't let them bother you, Henry. Just relax. Did you hear what he said? I certainly did. What did he say? He said, the trouble is, I never seem to have enough time. Oh, that old complaint. Just let us try running a little slower to give more time. And what happens? Bingo. Over to the jewelers for a major operation. Say, did I ever show you my scar from the last one? The trouble with him is he's not organized. I should say not. Not like us. Talk to us about organizing our time, eh? Second hour follows the first, third follows the second. But him, he's rushing to make a one o'clock appointment at 1.30, putting off at three o'clock until tomorrow. Fine thing. I know where I'm supposed to be at a given hour, and I'm there. Aren't you supposed to chime now or something? Good heavens, almost forgot. Stand back, everybody. Poor Henry. You think you're hearing bells, don't you? Say, you do need to relax. That's it. Just try to forget time for a little while, Henry. You were saying? I was saying our young friend here isn't organized. Now, wait a moment, please. I'm his wristwatch. I'm with him all the time. I guess I ought to have something to say. How would you put up with all those insults about not enough time? Oh, Henry's not a bad sort, really. Forgets to whine me now and then. But he does have a problem. A problem? Several, in fact. You see... Well, you might call it the nature of his work. He has so many things to do, so many people to call on. Take yesterday, for instance, an average day. My friend, the bedside alarm clock, will bear me out on this. Woke Henry up promptly at seven, and up Henry got. Showered, shaved, and dressed in a twinkling. Off to the restaurant for breakfast. Ate with his right hand and made notes on his day's calls with his left. Very difficult, too, for a man who's right-handed. Also very difficult because of the nature of the calls themselves. Was the Hennigan Company hotter right now than the Burley Company? Should he put them both off in favor of Sweeney, 
whom he should have called on the day before. Good heavens, he hadn't seen Sweeney for a month. But not today, because Osgood wants him to help price that new building job. And yet, if he gets tied up with Osgood, who had talked the fittings off a mile of pipe, he'd never get away in time to take Smedley to lunch. And he'd been promising Smedley a lunch now for two weeks. Oops, Smedley hasn't been waiting. No, sir, it's got to be Osgood. All right, call Smedley once more. But then, what about that trip to the east side to see why those valves don't make up? How should he know why they don't make up? That means a call back to the office to raise old Ned with the order department. Or maybe it's shipping. And all that time, three more customers are wondering if they'll ever see Henry again. You see what I mean? So he makes one call, but on his way to see Osgood, he remembers he had promised Pettifoot to drop in around 10 to give him some information on pipe sizes. And here it is, 10.15 if it's a minute. Pettifoot's a nice fella. They're all nice fellas, come to think of it. But they have a lot to do, the same as Henry. So Pettifoot keeps him waiting 20 minutes. Then asks his advice about building a shed for all that pipe he has stored and before you know it, it's time for lunch. Lunch with whom? Osgood? Smedley? Of course not. Pettyfoot. When a customer says, hey, it's lunchtime, you don't grab your hat and run. So in the afternoon, he rushed across town to see why those valves don't make up and decides to call the office again. Calls the office, but the shipping clerk has had a bad day and can't find the order Henry's talking about and suggest that sometime tomorrow Henry drop in. Among other things he feels Henry should do. Zip, back to Osgood, who wants to know where was Henry all morning? And does he think that pricing job can wait till the building's finished? Of course not. So Henry gets tied up there until late afternoon, then calls Smedley to assure him tomorrow's a day for lunch. But Smedley can't make it. He's having lunch with one of Henry's competitors. So with that encouraging bit of information to see him through the rest of the day, Henry decides nuts to it all and sees a movie. Sees, sees a movie. movie? Sure, he sees a movie. He's human, isn't he? He gets tired same as you do. Only in his case, there's nobody around to wind him up again. He has to do his own winding. You mean it's pretty much like that day after day? Pretty much. Doesn't see a movie every day, of course. Most days, he just sticks at it, hoping that somehow he'll make it to the end of the week. Well, I never. Good heavens, that reminds me. Time for some more chimes. Stand back, everybody. I'm all wound up today. Heard him again, eh, Henry? But don't worry, they're only the chimes down at the corner. There you are, good as new again. Henry, take your time. Oh, well. Back to the office, get those deliveries and specifications ready for burlap, and zingo, there he goes. Oh, well, guess he'll never learn. Tough day? Oh, for two pins, I'd drop a whole minute. Oh, shush. Tell me, how does your boy manage? Oh, Pete? <laughs> he used to be exactly like Henry. Used to be? Then he worked out a system. What do you mean? Well, the first thing Pete discovered was the importance of keeping a schedule. Oh, Henry keeps a schedule. Sure, I've seen it. Or, uh, them, rather. Hunks of paper, old envelopes, backs of menus. Trouble with menu schedules is you usually hand them back to the waiter. A lot of good they do him. Nope, I'm talking about a real schedule. The kind you draw up a week in advance and keep with you. A week in advance? Exactly. Every weekend, Pete makes up a schedule for the coming week. Now, there's an old one on his desk now. Notice? He figures on one important customer in the morning and one important customer in the afternoon, each day of the week. Then he figures on an average of two others, morning and afternoon, as fill-ins. 
Of course, he doesn't always get those others in, but at least he has two big ones each day to concentrate on. When he sees some spare time shaping up, he slips in that call he couldn't make late yesterday or the day before. And when I say call, I mean a personal call too, not just a phone call, unless he calls to cancel or verify an appointment. Well, that's all very well, but what about new business? Nobody knows the importance of new business better than Pete. And that becomes a matter of scheduling, too. Pete figures on making at least two new calls each week. He leaves the exact time rather flexible, but just as a starter, he figures Tuesday and Wednesday mornings, right after making the big scheduled call for each morning. If he can't see his man, he tries to find out what time would be best. Then, writes it in. Now here's something important. After a while, his calls follow a pattern. He plans to see each important customer at least once every two weeks. And nothing short of an earthquake will keep him from it. That way, his clients get used to seeing him on a certain day. Even if a customer has a problem, he figures, well, uh, Pete will be in Tuesday. I'll take it up with him then. Of course, it doesn't work that way all the time. But it works often enough to make it worthwhile. Okay, make a schedule. Figure two important calls a day. Fill in the less important when possible. Two calls a week on new prospects. Uh, another thing. Every Monday, Pete plans his lunches for the week. That's when he does use the phone. Lines up enough good customers for five coming noon times to make every moment count. Of course, there are cancellations, but Pete always has one or two reserves to drop in if he has to. But the important thing is, the schedule is there. A nice, neat, orderly schedule that brings him up to date with himself in a jiffy. He doesn't just plunk a name down arbitrarily, either. Sure, at first, that's the way you have to do it. But after a while, you get to know your client's preference. Jones prefers Tuesday. McGinnis prefers Friday, and so on. But again, when he has to make a switch, there's the old personal timetable to work it out on. Looks simple, all right. Almost too simple. It's simple, all right. But not so simple it can't be flexible. That's the big thing. Keep it flexible. But without a plan, you can't be flexible. Only confused. Without a schedule, think of the time he spends just worrying or correcting old mistakes. Now, if Jones can't see him or Anderson can't make it for lunch, Pete doesn't try to keep it in his head or jot it down on a menu for some waiter to ponder over. He notes it on his schedule, then forgets about it until he looks at the schedule again. Now, notice something else, too. Notice these jottings here? That's Briggs's job. Mayfield Apartments. And after this name, the Kenmore Thruway. Or over here, Tubbs, Soil Pipe. Those are little cues to each man's particular interest or some problem he has. In other words, a good salesman senses what the buyer is interested in or tries to. He rarely goes in without having something constructive to say, rarely says, anything on the books today? No nift gnawing around looking for a topic of mutual interest. And while he's making each call, he never worries about his next one gives the business at hand all his attention. And just for his own information, back of the schedule, he jots down a brief history of each call. Wilson, not ready yet. McKay, thinking about electric weld, and so on. That way, his next call on that prospect can be better planned. Uh, am I getting ahead of you? Not at all. I'm soaking up every word of it. Good. What's that last line down there at the bottom? Oh. A little reminder Pete put there. When you think you're through for the day, make one more call. No movies or ball games? Oh, I suppose so, now and then. He doesn't tell me about those. The way I figure it, if things are clicking along smoothly, he doesn't feel so bushed at the end of the day and doesn't feel he has to take a little time off. Although I, uh, I must admit, he came in late one afternoon smelling to high heaven of popcorn. And you know something? He had the nerve to look me right in the eye and say, you can't be out selling when you're taken in the circus. 
<laughs> of course, I don't want to sound too Pollyannish. In this business, I understand you got to take the downs with the ups or something. Nothing is ever perfect. But the whole thing is to make a schedule. Whether you change it a dozen times a day or not, with at least two important calls a day. Establish a routine of important calls as quickly as possible. Keep the smaller calls more flexible for emergencies. Figure at least two new calls a week. Keep the schedule with you all the time so that any change can be made on paper, not in thin air. Accept those sudden changes as part of the deal. In fact, know each man's preference as to time. Know what you're going to talk about so the conversation can get down to brass tacks in a hurry. Jot down a brief history of each call. Uh, and let's see. When you think you're through for the day, make one more call. Uh-oh. Here he comes back again. Forgot something as usual. Nope. That's not it, Henry. But, oh boy, I wish you'd take a look at it. Well, what do you know? Say, do you think Henry will ever get onto the schedule idea? Sure he will. Things usually work themselves out. All it takes, in most cases, is a little time.